By the power of movie magic, we are here at Tyler's, and today we will be attempting to replace this entire side in one day. So we're going to cut all this out. Thankfully, Tyler got down to the bare metal. All this is Bondo. All that's Bondo. Whole section's coming off and welded back in. So I'm going to show you how it's done for all of you that need to replace your sides. Let's get it. For this repair, we will be using the Clocker Home Real Large Replacement Panel. This one is from Bus Depot, but if you want to help support the channel, you can get it from Heritage Parts Center and use Vangabonders 10 at checkout for 10% off, if they ever get it back in stock. Now, if you've been keeping up with this channel for any amount of time, you already know how I feel about the Clocker Home Replacement Panels. What? What? It's all wrong. This, none of this lines up. This is the worst piece of replacement metal I've ever bought. But unfortunately, if you have a late bay, the Clocker Home Replacement Panel is one of your only options. Now, if you have an early bay, I do recommend going with the Classic Fab Funky Green Panel, as I've never had an issue with their fitment. Tape, blue tape, blue tape. I like to use masking tape to mark off my cuts, as it's a lot easier to follow than a Sharpie. And when it comes to cutting sheets of metal off of your bus, you want to ensure that you don't cut too deep, as there's often structural supports hiding behind it. Another piece of advice is that if your gas tank is in place, make sure to isolate it from all the sparks that will be flying into your engine bay. And for the vertical cut here, I decided to do it on the inside of the C pillar because whenever you can keep your factory seams, it makes your repair look a lot better and it's a lot easier to get it to fit correctly. We gotta get all these spot welds out in here. Spot welds? Yeah. Yeah, cause I can't really see where the spot welds are. Okay. Get the paint off of this. Yep. The inner side? Yeah, yep. like this inner lip. One of the simplest ways to identify where all your spot welds are is to remove the paint using a poly disc or a sander. Here I'm having Tyler remove as much of the paint as possible using a poly disc. All right. And what you're left with is paint only in the indents where the spot welds are. Now, unfortunately, I did forget to bring my spot weld remover tool. So I'll just be using a 5 8 drill bit in order to remove the spot welds. Now, make sure not to drill too deep so you don't get into the metal behind it. And then using my air hammer, which is one of my new favorite tools that I've bought recently, I just pushed up the metal so that it was split apart and allow me to get a pry bar in there to kind of pry the metal away and start to separate it. Unfortunately, not all of the spot welds were visible in the wheel well area, so we had to resort to just grinding everything down with a flap disc. Yeah, we gotta get rid of wherever the spot welds are here. I can barely see them. I should be doing this with gloves if I value my skin. All right, yeah, now we just gotta get it off from the bottom here. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Am I looking good? That's what excitement looks like, see? Do your best one. No. I have no bling. I'm not a flexer. I spend my money on tools and bus. That's flex. Th yeah, that's my flex. That's our flex. We get that flex. Yeah. Most people don't get that flex. They just want to have jewelry, it takes uh, watches. So long to get tools. We're going to go ahead and say tools over wristwatch every time. Why do you need a wristwatch? You got a smartphone. I know. You got the sun. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> read the sun. Work. Yeah. <laughs> and go to work Tyler did as he spent the next 30 minutes grinding away at the spot welds in the inner fender. Unfortunately, he wasn't doing it the way that I would have, so he was having some struggles. Make him work. Jeez. I don't know how you I don't know how you get at it. Let me show you how it's done. Wait. Let me put on my mask. Now the way that I like to do it, as someone who has ground away at many spot welds, is to hold the flap disc vertical and use the edge of it to dig in right where the spot welds are. That way you're not wasting any of the flap disc material on the extra metal, and it allows you to eat through the spot welds a little bit quicker than to try to grind the whole area flat at once. I'll just wiggle it until it comes out. All this is the original foam. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna replace this with seam sealer because it's the best we've got. And we're gonna get all this cleaned up. There we go. We should be able to use that. From factory along this channel, Volkswagen used some kind of adhesive foam in order to adhere that quarter panel to the inside of the wheel well. This prevents oil canning and also makes that area a lot sturdier so that you don't get weird waves in the sheet metal. 
So we'll be doing that with Seam Sealer as it seemed to be the best solution and it's the only thing I could come up with after looking for it on the Samba for a long time. It seems like not many people do this repair or at least don't talk about it. So hopefully I'm helping you guys find some solutions to what might be a problem that you're having. What about that corner? Yeah, where your hand. No, it's all bent. We gotta straighten it out somehow. Get a like a two by four uh -huh. and bring it over here. How big? Uh, I don't know. Yep, I got it. There we go. That's more like the shape it's supposed to have. Okay. Yeah, I'm still trying to wrap my head around this idea here. Here we've got a bit of an issue. We've got this inner piece that is preventing us from being able to weld these seams together. So I might be cutting it out, welding the seams together and then re-welding this piece on. And this is all hammered, they hammered it out from the inside because the reason we're replacing this whole section is because it was crashed in here. We replaced this corner a few episodes ago. Now we got to replace this entire side, but nothing's impossible. I like that attitude. Yeah. Unfortunately, due to the fact that this corner was crashed in and we did replace it, I wasn't able to save the original seam. So what I'm doing here is making sure I have access to the seam so that I could make it straight, remove the paint, and then drill some quarter inch holes so that I could plug weld it from the engine side. This will allow us to fasten that corner to the side panel that we're welding in. We're gonna try, attempt to use the old piece as a template, kind of get an idea where to cut. This could get us pretty close. I think so. Got a marker? Yep. If only you'd cut it straight. Right? <laughs> Look, I can turn the light on. How's the uh, lengthwise over there? It's, oh, it's long. Is there ever really a last test fit? So if you look over here, we've got this situation. And that's due to the fact that uh, when we replaced this corner, we didn't know we were gonna do this piece. So I fit the corner to the dented piece. And that's creating all kinds of issues that hopefully we'll be able to solve. Cause that's a lot of seam sealer to seal. And that's about a good. Is it? I think so. I can see, I can see light. That's good. Oh, I like that. You like it? I like it. I like it too. This gap's a little huge down here, but it's on the bottom. We won't see it. We'll work with it. To ensure that final cut on the top was as accurate as possible, I had Tyler push the metal in from the outside. Yo, my mark is right on the money. The one that's there. I know that it would be. Wow. And wherever I could reach it on the inside, I traced it out as best as I could. All right, let's check our marks. Hey, really, I feel good about it. <laughs> and then it was down to making our last cut on a replacement panel. And as you've heard many times before, measure twice, cut once. You'll see that I'm still not good at that. The test bit of fear. Oh, let's just clean it up. You wanna clean it up first? Pack it in, man. He believes in me. I believe in you. Also, don't forget to clean up any of the surfaces that will be sandwiched together and plug welded. Final fit. You wanna go ahead and turn the welder on? <laughs> So that needs to go down, and yeah, when it it's got to be clamped. It's not all up all the way. I think this needs to go down, preventing it from going up. Up to about here. And for any final adjustments, I like to use a flap disc and lightly sand down whatever edges are a little bit too long, but make sure not to go crazy with it. Let's test fit one more time. That's gonna work. 
With all our final adjustments complete, I could finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. Tyler went ahead and POR 15 the inside of the wheel well just to ensure that there would be no fuck me, just to ensure that there would be no rust problems in the future. And we also went ahead and drilled our plug weld holes and wherever the seam sealer was going to go on our wheel arch replacement piece, we ground it down to bare metal. And another big shout out to Dave C for sending us this hole punch tool. We still use it regularly. And there are some spots that the hole punch tool can't reach. So for those, we used a quarter inch drill bit and just drilled all around the fender line where the plug welds will go. Now the inside of Tyler's wheel well was not as rusty as mine, but there is a small patch that I'll need to custom fabricate in order to fix the rust hole. For this repair, I will be using cardboard aided design, also known as CAD. And I'll be showing you the way that I like to do it without a shrinker or a stretcher. If I had one, it would be a lot easier, but I'm making this complex curve, complex in quotation marks, using two pieces bent and welded together. This makes it pretty easy for the average person to just be able to create any kind of patch just with a little bit of extra work. I would also like to take this time to thank all of you guys who have been supporting the channel, leaving comments, hitting that like button, and subscribing. We're about to reach 20,000 subscribers and I can't tell you guys how much that means to me. I make these videos to help out the average person like me. I was never a fabricator by trade or someone who worked with metal. I just kind of learned along the way and watching videos, reading on the Samba. And I'm hoping I could pass that knowledge on to more viewers and more people so that more people could try to take these projects on their own. And that's really a big part of this channel is finding a way to get people motivated to work on their projects or to take on a project that they might have been scared to take on. It takes a lot of work to make these videos and I'm not the best video editor so it takes me even longer to put these clips together. So I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, leave a comment down below. It really does help to support the channel. And if you aren't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button and just follow along this journey of uh, bus discovery. With those sappy bits out of the way, I'll get back to explaining my workflow. As you can see, I've made this repair into two pieces that I'm going to weld together. That is so that I could get the curve of the fender and the curve of the lip. Like I said before, without a shrink or a stretcher, this is kind of impossible to do if you don't make it in two pieces. But with this two piece design, it's all a matter of getting your cardboard to fit, transferring it to the metal and then cutting it out and welding it together. Personally, once it's welded into place, I like to grind down my weld so it comes out smooth and looks good. It's not exactly necessary for a part that's going to be hidden behind the wheel well, but I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to these little repairs, and I just like things to look good inside and out. Two. Let's do this one first, okay. and I'll smear it. Oh, that stuff smells good. It does smell nice, right? Just go apply it in that whole entire seam over there. Yep, and these right here. Yeah, and those two. I'm talking about copious. Oh, okay, copious, like frosting a cake. How's that? More, less? Never less, always more. Feel free to use that whole tube. Hopefully we won't have to pull this panel off again. Place her in. Let's try not to get any of this stuff on our welding surface. Mm -hmm. Good there? Uh, yeah, good. Give me a push here, forward. Yep. Oh, beautiful. How are we over there? How's the gap? I think it's good. Check it out. Too big. Too Slide big? it that way. A little bit. Hold on. All right, try to hold it in place there. I'll push here. Yep, go for it. You got it? Yep. Is it good now? Let me see. Yeah. Can't see That's the ticket. Is that what you want? That's what we want. I mean, from over here, it looks good. If you don't look at it from too close. Good. From over there? Over there, it looks great. Push out. Uh, push out a little bit more. There, uh, out, uh, in a little bit. There, clamp, uh, out, clamp it. Oh. Move. We're on the money. Good. Money-ish. Okay. Now we just need one down here. I get one there. Yeah, or we need one here, is it in this gap here. Yep. Can you reach in there? All right, tighten. Ooh, that's a big gap. <laughs> you got clothes hangers? Um, not metal. Huh? Not metal. 
and I didn't bring any filler rod. And this is why they tell you, measure twice or thrice, cut once. Look at that gap. Unfortunately, part of our cut ended up being a little bit too wide. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say I did this on purpose to show you guys new techniques that you can learn if you make the same mistake. And I've used this technique before, obviously because I'm so good at cutting. What I've got here is just a regular coat hanger. I guess you just weld like if it was a filler, I have no idea. And it's the coat hanger or filler rod technique. And you'll be seeing a little bit of it later. For now, I'm just securing the panel together and welding it where I can. I like to start from one side and weld to the other. That way you don't end up with any oil canning or warpage in the middle. If you try to tack it on both far ends, you might end up with some bulging in the middle due to the metal stretching or compressing. This is a time-lapse machine. Not a time machine. Time lapse machine. And with my time lapse machine in place, I can become what I call a weld printer. I'm going ahead and spacing my tack welds apart far enough that I'm not heating the metal up too much. And I worked my way up until I reached the huge gap. Huge gap. Neighbor, what's his name? Joe. Joe bought his coat hangers. We're going to do the classic coat hanger trick. Use a magnet there. And How big one. is that gap? Too big. Too big. Is that technical? Uh, the technical term for it is fucked. <laughs> But look at that, with that coat hanger in place, how big is that gap now? I'd say it's unfucked. <laughs> and now we'll just start working our way across. Attack here, you do attack on top to the coat hanger and then attack on bottom and should work, should. There you go. We'll just work our way across like that. I'm feeling good about it. I feel good about it. Never want to weld too close to the magnet because it messes up your, your arc. And with the solution to our huge gap issue in place, I can now move on to being a weld printer again. And if you'd like to learn how to be a weld printer, sign up for my weld printing. No, I'm joking. But if you would like to help support the channel, we do have a Patreon and you can sign up for that for as little as $1 a month. Helps to support the channel and you get all kinds of exclusive content, like behind the scenes footage of, of who knows what. Now, Mallory, which one was your favorite one? I like the first one. Actually, wait, can I? I didn't get to see that. Not enough time. <laughs> my parking spot's a little tight like my... I think he ate too much. He's a little pale. Hopefully everything's all right. I think he's gonna be okay. But anywho, I continued to weld this into place. Tyler was following me with compressed air, kind of cooling off my welds to help the process move along a little bit quicker. If you want to cool down your welds with a wet rag or compressed air, it's definitely a good solution to overheating your panel. And well, it was time to move on to grinding down the welds. This is certainly one of my least favorite parts of the process, but there is something so satisfying of seeing two sheets of metal become one. And of course, if you have any pinholes, you go back, close them up, and then grind them down again but in the end i was quite pleased with how this repair came out and i think tyler was just as happy as well and don't forget that if you'd like to see more content like this hit that subscribe button down below it's free and there are plenty more videos to come and well i will see you guys on the next one